Hey everybody, welcome back to the farm. I know it's been a couple weeks since my last video. I apologize for the delay. We have been baling hay and I didn't think you wanted to watch yet another haying video. So, uh, some new things on the farm. One of our Pinsgauer heifers had her first calf a couple days ago. We decided to uh, put her in the maternity pen to keep, her, uh, keep a closer eye on her and calf. Little bull calf was born. They did it naturally on her own. Um, but they're out in the pasture. You can see out back the, uh, the rest of the herd is out there. There's a big patch of uh, uh, like brush that the cows hang out in. And uh, the cow was leaving her, this cow was leaving her new calf alone uh, for hours on end. And uh, you know, at night that we hear coyotes out and uh, it was a little unsettling knowing that she was leaving him alone. So we decided to lock her up in the maternity pen and uh, the bonding definitely has improved between mother and calf. Um, if, if he was drinking every six hours when she was leaving him alone, that improved to every 20 minutes. He gets up, runs around her, gets a drink. And uh, now if we go in there anywhere near the calf, you know, she lets us know that she's not that happy with us. So I believe that this move to uh, put mother and baby in the maternity pen was a good move. They're doing great. This was, uh, they just got put in here yesterday. So this is their first day, probably 24 hours she's been in there so far. We've got a trough here with water for it. And I just, you'll see in the video, I cut some uh, alfalfa with uh, old sai and uh, a hand sigh and then a larger hand sigh and uh, put a pile of alfalfa there for her to eat. Um, and then when she's done with that, I'll put in some dry, fresh baled hay that we've been uh, working on. And that'll be her, her lunch, her breakfast, dinner, and supper. So anyways, I've got some other stuff to show you guys. The pumpkin patch is doing great. I wanna take you for a walk and show you that. I'm out in the pumpkin patch. Wanted to do a quick update, let you know how things are going out here. We have got a lot of pumpkins. Our uh, decorative sweet, our decorative corn, it's not sweet corn, it's just decorative corn. There's some bicolor and some, I wanna say there's three or four different varieties. You can kind of tell by the different heights. Um, the first part of the row, there's two next to each other. They're headed out and not much taller than three feet. Then we've got a second variety that ends right here. Um, and then you've got this taller stuff here. And then there's a back two rows that end and then they go into some different varieties. The corn is, is all different stages. It's all decorative that will go along with the stalks and uh, corn cobs along with the pumpkins and straw bales and everything for fall decorating. Uh, that's what we're trying to achieve here. My wife also has a ton of sunflowers in this patch. We've got some on the ends of rows. We've got a nice row here in the background of the, uh, of the garden and then along the middle of the patch, we've got quite a few hills that are just sunflowers and then of course on the other end of the patch. And again, several different varieties of sunflowers and several different varieties of pumpkins out here. Uh, one of our best grower is called a Connecticut Field and that is your big 20 pound carving pumpkin. Uh, I believe we did the first four rows. I think there's 24 hills per row and the first four rows close to the road are those Connecticut fields. And then there's four or six rows on this end of the field. Same thing. I think it, I think it narrowed to about 18 hills per row on this end. But everywhere in the middle, I'm gonna switch hands here. Everywhere in the middle, there are several varieties. Now, I don't remember the names of every single one of them. But we have pie pumpkins that are a little bit smaller that obviously are used for making pies. You can also use them just for decoration. They're smaller. I would say they're about a uh, mini basketball size. And the tried and true um, Connecticut field. And that's what this looks like, a Connecticut field or a Howden. Howden is another type that uh, did very well I'm sorry if I'm going to make you dizzy. As I find pumpkins here, I'll bend down and show you them. There's a couple of large, about the size of basketballs. And so the purpose when we planted these of putting those um, 
paint sticks in the ground was so that when we weren't sure what they were, we could just check what they were. So here's the paint stick right here, pulling it out of the ground. My boy Joe planted it, it's a Howden. So, see now here's a different variety that I'm talking about. That's a real decorative, it's sort of a warty looking, not very tall, but it's a very wide, beautiful pumpkin. Uh, very popular, my wife loves these. And then in this row, we have a ton of gourds planted. They're called Jack B. Littles. Of course, they're miniature sized pumpkins. Moringa. Oh, I broke the stick. And that would be this style pumpkin right here. They're already bright orange. They're kind of a smaller size pumpkin. Um, and they don't get they don't get much bigger than that. So they look really nice on your porch, on your steps, maybe on your desk or on the counter. The other problem we've got, we do have a problem in this pumpkin patch. And, and that is deer. In the last three years that we've had a pumpkin patch, we have suffered some pretty severe losses and I never took the time to file the paperwork or ask for or request crop damage permits from the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. And uh, this year I did, as soon as the pumpkins went in the ground, I requested and received hunting permits, crop damage, deer damage permits, whatever you wanna call them. And, uh, and it's a good thing that I have because there's, uh, there's a lot of deer traffic in here and I've already taken and harvested some deer and they've already done some damage. The deer took a bite out of that pumpkin and it's ruined. Oh, it's not a carving pumpkin anymore. Um, it'll slowly but surely rot and uh, We'll either feed the pigs or the chickens, but Doug needs to step up his game. He needs to get that stick out of his hiney and start scaring some deer away. <laughs> Pumpkin patch ends here. The first row, um, I think we did, like I said, four or five rows of Connecticut fields. And if you want a large 20 pound carver, a beautiful jack-o'-lantern, a Connecticut field is the type of pumpkin you want to plant. The other plant, the other types, the other varieties don't grow as well. Their plant isn't as bushy and they don't produce, they just don't produce the, the size pumpkins that we've found that people want. Um, yeah. We've tried, we still try the other ones, but the bulk of the pumpkin patch is a Connecticut field in Howden. There's Jardales, Moringas, um, Flat Whites, uh, Jack B. Littles are the gourds. Uh, there's some winter squash. There's several varieties of gourds that are out here, but uh, they're all producing. There we got some more deer damage on this one. See, right here within the shadow of Doug, I found two pumpkins. There was one, you know, this is a pretty good sized pumpkin here. It's about the size of a basketball. And just two, two or three bites out of it, two or three nibbles. And, uh, and it's ruined. All right, guys, here's a strange thing, strange phenomenon that happened out here in the pumpkin patch this year. Uh, we're looking at a zucchini plant. Now, we didn't intend to plant any zucchinis out in the pumpkin patch. Actually, my, um, my wife's cousin had the same issue happen uh, at the feed mill where we bought this, some of these seeds. 
this package was not intended to be zucchini but a type of pumpkin and I can't remember offhand uh, which one um, but thankfully we did not plant the entire field with that type we've got four hill uh, four plants or four hills that we planted a ton of these so you know if it was four or five seeds we've got four or five zucchini plants per hill so there are a lot we have been picking these and there are a lot yet to be picked and here's another one right in the row there's just a couple small zucchinis on there right now and then here's the last hill and there's a lot on this one there it is not making this up folks we did not plant zucchinis but we got a lot of zucchinis Alright, this is one of the ones I was talking about uh, earlier. It's a uh, Jardale. That's the type of pumpkin. It's a bluish gray, almost. Um, very popular. Just decorative. I don't think you would carve that pumpkin. Um, but looks beautiful. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me tonight and taking a walk through the pumpkin patch. There's not a lot more I can say. We've got some beautiful varieties of pumpkins and they're all doing great. Like I said, with all this rain, um, it's pretty hard to screw up. The sunflowers are growing tall. The, uh, the, the garden is looking great. Of course, we're enjoying sweet corn out of my parents' garden. And uh, the only thing that can screw this up now is the deer. And I'm gonna head back to the house and grab the 30-30 and get on duty. I gotta help Doug, he's slipping. So I hope you enjoy the video, folks. We'll catch you next time. You can see the difference, folks. First four rows. One, two, three, one, two, three, four rows. Those are Connecticut fields. Look at the difference in the vines. When you get to the middle, I think those are Howdens. And you can see all the way to those bare patches. Those are the Morangas. But you can see the pumpkins from here. There's the there's the garden. Hey, Dad. hey dude. There's the garden. Sweet corn is doing great. <laughs>